The new artificial intelligence startup from richest man in the world, Elon Musk, has officially been released. XAI has been made available to a select group today, that's according to Musk, and it comes nearly a year after ChatGPT caught the imagination of both businesses and users around the world. Now, Musk says he has big goals for XAI. He said earlier this year he wants to launch a maximum truth-seeking AI that tries to understand the nature of the universe. Here to discuss is Jim Anderson, CEO of Beacon, an AI software company. Jim, thanks for joining us. Thanks for being. So earlier this year, Elon Musk and other tech leaders signed this letter. It, it called for a pause on AI. And at the time, they were saying that it could create dangerous propaganda. It could take away jobs. They said it was dangerous to society. Fast forward to today, Musk releasing his version. Is this in any way an about? Is this in any way an about face? Yeah, I think it really is. One of the odd things when Elon Musk signed that letter is, you know, we knew he was interested in AI. And the cynics you know, said, well, gee, you just want everybody else to pause so that you can catch up. And, you know, the, today's announcement seems to validate that he certainly didn't want to pause. He wanted to move forward aggressively. Now, the, the other side of that is maybe he's, he genuinely does believe that there are some irresponsible things happening. There's plenty of room for, for disagreement on, on what should happen in terms of responsible AI. But clearly, he's, he's strongly motivated. You know, Musk says that his version will be without censorship. What do you make of this? Yeah, I, I'm not quite sure what to make of that. I, you know, censorship is, of course, a, a very ripe top topic. It's very political, very politicized. We've seen how that's manifested in Twitter, now X, uh, you know, his his comments on the woke mind virus, et cetera. But I, I am actually much more interested in the training data that I think he has access to. We tend to think of things in terms of chat GPT and, you know, give me a cool recipe for a vegetarian dinner party, you know, that kind of thing. And that's neat for chatbots to be able to do. But he's got probably 4 million Teslas on the road collecting massive amounts of data. He's got Starlink satellites, and he's got access now to training data, the likes of which few other companies, if any, have. And I think that really creates some interesting opportunities of what he can do with his AI. Interesting. Uh, you know, and meanwhile, we are one year away from the 2024 presidential election. Uh, the Republican National Committee and presidential candidate Ron DeSantis have used AI to create fake ads. How big of a problem will election misinformation be in the 2024 election? I think it's going to be a big problem. I think in misinformation in general on the internet. We all remember the early days of, of email, and then remember spam became a huge problem when people realized they could effectively send an unlimited amount of emails, number of emails for, for, for what amounted to be free to them. And I think we're seeing that with content creation more broadly now is anybody and everybody can create effectively unlimited amounts of content, whether that be political or commercial or, or, or other reasons. And we're all being flooded with that. And I don't think that the internet as a whole or, or us as a society has really figured out how we're going to deal with that. And it's going to become very, very acute in, in the election. You know, and days ago, uh, the White House actually issued an executive order on AI. Let's take a quick listen together to what President Biden had to say. The Department of Commerce is going to help develop standards to watermark and clearly label AI generated content. How do you think this will work? You know, the watermarking is a great idea. I mean, technologically, you can thumbprint or fingerprint a video or an image and, and apply that watermark. But it, it's, it's like a, a cat and mouse game. It's like encryption, right? You can encrypt things and you can have more powerful computers decrypt things. You can put watermarks, you can fake watermarks. So I, I don't think there's any perfect answer, but I do think one of the things about that executive order and about regulatory scrutiny more broadly is it's good to be having these conversations. We, we seemed to make some mistakes in the era of social media and e-commerce and those those kinds of things where we said, oh, regulation is just going to slow us down. We'll get to that later. And, and we saw some of the negative effects of that. So I, I think it's actually pretty encouraging that you're seeing even the companies themselves at least uh, try to embrace some regulatory framework. But of course, with all of these things, the devil's in the details, right? I mean, reasonable people are going to disagree quite vehemently in some cases about what an appropriate amount of regulation is. Okay, Jim Anderson, appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.